Okay, everybody, hopefully you've still got your uh, first set of uh, drawing practice. If you're just joining me, that's okay. Take a screenshot um, or uh, take a moment to draw some structures uh, for yourself. So far, we've used this to draw structures and uh, assign Vesper shapes. And today we're going to assign formal charges to elements, uh, to our atoms in these structures. So remember formal charge is, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put formal charge, is should minus has. So we gotta have our valence electrons and you can see I have mine uh, nicely organized. And then we're gonna subtract the number of atoms that it has. In the molecule and every line and every dot counts as one okay oxygen brings in six this oxygen has one two three four five six and that has seven so that's a minus one nitrogen brings in five here it has one two three four five minus four is plus one this oxygen brings in six it has one two three four five six so six minus six is zero. This oxygen is the same as this one, and it's minus one. All right, now normally what we would try to do is we would use this knowledge of formal charges to say, well, is there any way we can make this better? And in this case, the answer is no. Um, but now let's look at this one. Uh, the carbon monoxide molecule. Carbon brings in four, and it has one, two, three, four, five. Four minus five is negative one. Oxygen brings in six and it also has one, two, three, four, five. This is a plus one. All right, so you can kind of see why carbon monoxide isn't a very uh, popular or particularly stable molecule because ideally the plus, the, the negative should be on oxygen. There's no way we can orient this to make it better. Uh, but so that's, uh, that's a situation. Uh, that we can uh, take into consideration. Now let's look at this one. And I know that I've mentioned that some of you may have drawn a structure with a double bond between bromine and one of these borons. Um, and I have been promising you that, that I would tell you why this is the better structure. And now I'm gonna do that. So boron brings in three valence electrons and here it has one, two, three. So the three minus three is zero. If you did a double bond, boron would have a charge of minus one. So that's not really good. Having zero is better. So bromine brings in seven. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven minus seven is zero. Same thing with this one. Same thing with this one. So if you had drawn a double bond for the bromine, I'm just gonna kind of do that. This is an erasable pen. So if you had done, done that, the bromine would be negative, or the boron would be negative one and the bromine would be positive one. Bromine is more electronegative. It definitely doesn't need a positive. And so by using the knowledge that um, boron is okay with an incomplete octet, I oh, made that really messy. It helps um, set up a good structure with formal charges. Okay, let's look at this one. Silicon brings in four. It has one, two, three, four. Fluorine brings in seven. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven minus seven is zero. Same all the way around. If you need to prove it to yourself, do it. Okay, let's look at this one. Here, carbon brings in four and it has one, two, three. Plus one. Four minus three is one. Okay, and you go, oh, carbon doesn't want to have a plus one. The hydrogens are all zeros. You can prove it to yourself or not worry about it. Okay, so this brings into consideration when you have a carbon that has a plus one formal charge. This is called a carbocation. You may hear it called a carbocation, uh, depending on your pronunciation. And this is unstable and it means it wants more electrons. So that's gonna be more important when we actually get into um, organic. But right now, noticing that there's a plus one on carbon um, and it's called a carbocation um, will be very helpful to you. Okay, now let's look at this structure. Let's start with fluorine. 
brings in seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven minus seven is zero. Oxygen brings in six. It has one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's a plus one. That's not good. Kind of makes you cringe a little bit. This carbon brings in four. It has one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's another one. Oh, that's not real good. Okay. And here, fluorine brings in seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's zero. So fluorine's happy, but these others, that's not real um, optimal. But so anytime you have a formal charge that's not zero on a, a carbon, it's going to be looking to, to be reactive. So this pair of electrons here is probably going to want to go somewhere else and form a bond. Uh, preview of coming attractions. Okay, let's look at this one now. Uh, here we have uh, sulfuric acid. So let's not bother with the hydrogens. All right, sulfur brings in six. Here it only has one, two, three, four. So that's a plus two. This oxygen brings in six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's zero. This one brings in six, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's zero. This oxygen brings in six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's minus one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's also minus one. So anybody cringing at the fact that sulfur is a plus two? Um, you may have seen me do this uh, before but there's a way you can fix it. It's called expanded octets, but we're not gonna worry about that because this is uh, an intro to organic. All right, let's look at this one. Hydrogen's fine. As long as hydrogen has one bond, it, it can't really do anything else. All right, carbon brings in four, one, two, three, four, zero. Sulfur brings in six, one, two, three, four, five, six, zero. Very good. 